Hello everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and welcome to another video on mechanics of solids. And today's video, we will try to derive three very important expressions which is going to really help you solve problems. They are in the form of extension in case of a conical section, more of a frustum, then there is this trapezoidal section and we will try to find out if in this section we apply an axial pull, how much is the extension, can that be worked out. Yes, it can be worked out and I'll help you derive the final expression for that. And also we'll try to find out the elongation or extension in case in case of a bar which is let's say fixed over to a ceiling and how much extension really happens due to its own weight. All these things and much more coming up in today's video. And here we go. First thing is conical section. So we'll try to work out the extension in a conical section. Now guys, this conical section that I am talking about, in reality would look, uh, well, it's going to look something like this if you watch, okay, like this. And what we are basically interested in, so here the diameter will be more, let's say, here the diameter will be less, small d and capital D. So obviously there is going to be an axis, okay, and there is going to be an axial pull, something like this, an axial pull. Let's say the value of that pull is P. What we wish to find is the extension along the length. Let's say initially the length is given by L. We wish to find how much, let's say, the extension base delta H. How much is this value of delta L? This is something that we'll try, try to work out in today's session. Okay, so let's see how that works. And we are basically going to start off by making the front view of this entire arrangement. Let's see how that initially spans out. Here we go. Let's do this quickly. So this, this frustum of a cone would look something like this in the front view, isn't it? The diameter over here is represented by capital D and here it is small d. What we wish to do is we wish to apply a load. So load has to be applied actually. So let me make the just axis. So that's the load represented by P and over here also like this represented by P. Now what, what are we going to do? So the first thing is we are going to take an element over here. Okay. Somewhere here we will try to take an element and guys keep watching carefully this element. Let me just shade this. Let's say that this element is x meters away from the left end. That is x. And the thickness of this element, this thickness over here, this small thickness is represented by dx. Okay. Fine. Now, now what, what, what can we do? How, how can we find the extension of this small element? If we can somehow find a way to find the extension of this small element, then we can integrate say from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to L to find the extension in the entire element. And by the way, this over here, this is the length of the object or the frustum of the cone or the conical section, whatever you can say. Now let's try to take a look at this element only. Okay. Now let's do an element analysis. So let me just make the front view of this element. This element over here would look something like this. Isn't it? Right? That's what I've made. That's the element. This element is having a thickness of dx. But what about the diameter of this element? Now if you take a look at this element from the side, from over here, if you take a look at this element, this element is actually circular in nature, isn't it? So this element would look something like this circular in nature and what we wish to find is the diameter of this circular section we know what the diameter here is we know what the diameter here is but somewhere at a distance of x meters away there is a section which we have taken and we wish to find the diameter along this this strip you can say diameter along this element you can say how can we do that now guys you've got to watch this analysis very carefully i'm writing it over here you just take a look 
at x is equal to 0 the diameter is z d small d and at x is equal to l the diameter is capital d that means for a range for a range of l for a range of l let me just write this range of l the diameter actually varies from uh, d minus d okay so this is the range of diameter you can say small d to capital d over a length of l meters now if i want the range for one meter let's say then this l will go downwards isn't it this is going to become d minus d over l and if i want diameter exact where x meters x meters it's going to be equal to how much d minus d over l times of x but you can clearly see that this much that this is the difference this is the difference and this is the difference so what you need to do you need to add a small d over here d plus this is the difference delta this is the difference delta and this is what we have actually worked out delta so what we need to do is we need to add the difference so diameter diameter this is something which i am going to be writing over here this diameter is going to work out as small d plus d minus d over l times of x now we know what the diameter is and why have we worked out the diameter well the reason being very simple we need to find the area okay now let's let's move forward there are a lot of things in this expression here we go now you know very well that the extension delta l is equal to p l upon a e you know this very well okay and if you have seen the before if you have seen the previous four lectures then you know the reason behind this expression this has been obtained from elastic constant e or from the hooke's law also you can say p l over a e now guys uh, the extension of the element let us try to calculate the extension of the element and that is going to be equal to p l that is p if you watch carefully this element also is being pulled in both the directions with a force of p that is p how much is the l for the element that is dx so it's going to be equal to p dot dx over area so we wish to find this is this is the force acting on this area that area can be seen from either from the right hand side or from the left hand side so this is the area that i am talking about that's the area okay and area is nothing but pi by 4 times of dia diameter square diameter and its square and what is the diameter at this cross section the diameter is this one so what we'll try to do is we'll try to plug in the value of area over here pi by 4 times of d square so this is going to be really really long and its square right i think we've, we've done everything and there is something which is left p l that's p that's l that is area area also done e is left yeah e is left okay let's see now what can something be done yes what we can do now is we can find the extension of this entire object you need to put in the limits how say from 0 to l that is the limit that you need to put up now 4p over pi e is a constant which can be taken outside 4p over pi e what's remaining inside is this so this is power 2 in the denominator if you transfer it to the numerator this would be power of minus 2 so this is going to become d plus d minus d over l times of x and to the power of minus 2 times of dx so this is the integral which we need to solve now this is this integral is looking very very weird so what i am going to do is i'll try to apply the method of substitution let's say let's say that d plus d minus d over l times of x is equal to a constant t now let's try to differentiate this differentiate with respect to let's say x when you do that differentiation of this d it's a constant by the way that's going to be zero and d minus d over l 
and when you do d by dx of x that is going to be 1 so you don't have to write that it will be equal to what dt over dx now if you try to work out the value of dx because we need dx in terms of dt so that can essentially be written as dx is equal to l over d minus small d multiplied by dt okay and as far as the limits are concerned you you are going to change the this integral so the limits are also going to change and if you just watch here we can actually find the corresponding limit upper uh, upper as well as lower limit in terms of t okay so for x is equal to 0 watch here x is equal to 0 0 multiplied by this bracket 0 the only thing remaining is d so t is equal to d then the new limit is equal to d and also the upper limit is going to change for x is equal to l the value of t for l l l n and l will cancel out d plus d minus d so the only thing remaining is this capital d that's going to be capital d okay so these are my new limits now let us plug in everything and let's see how things work out here we go okay this is going to be 4p by pi e and uh, and the thing that we need to work out over here this has to be replaced by t so that has to be t to the power minus 2 and dx has to be replaced with this dt over here okay this stuff so this is a constant this can be taken as outside so let me just write it as l over d minus d okay new limits small d capital d small d to capital d and that is t raised to minus 2 times of dt okay i hope you can understand this this is very easy so dx has been replaced with l upon d minus d times of dt and this has been replaced this has been replaced with t therefore t to the power minus 2 and this is a pretty much simple integration you can remember this x to the power in dx is equal to i think you have done this a number of times in your 12th grade and this is what we'll try to use so t to the power minus 2 plus 1 upon minus 2 plus 1 this is going to be negative of t to the power minus 1 and this is going to be negative of 1 over t it's that simple okay so let me just write it t to the power minus 1 that is the expression which we are interested in here we go again 4p over pi e times of l over d minus d times of that's the limit limit is what you've got a negative value right negative of what 1 over t and you have to plug in the limits from d to capital d so just take a look at this 1 upon d capital d minus 1 upon small d isn't it you already have a negative value if you take it outside then you will have 1 over capital d minus 1 over small d and when you take this transfer this inside this is going to become 1 over this is going to become positive by the way minus 1 over d so instead of doing all of this let me just write this finally okay and where is the duster here it is so the final expression that we will have is 4p over pi e into l upon d minus d times of 1 over small d minus 1 over caps lock d or capital D right and now things are getting very simplified 4p over pi e okay times of l upon d minus d and once you take the lcm this is going to be d d this is going to be d minus l so this d minus not l whereas this is d these two boys are going to cancel out okay and the stuff remaining well extension we have the final value of the extension extension is going to be 4 p l upon pi e d d okay so if you know this formula what you can do you can plug in all the values of small d capital d young's modulus and and the actual forces value and the length of this conical section on plugging in all the values you can find the net extension right so topic one is over 
Now let's take a look at this trapezoidal section. Here we go. Now guys, uh, let us take a look at another case. And this is going to be a trapezoidal section having uniform thickness, let's say T. Now this is going to be pulled along the axis or tensile pull. And we'll try to work out the amount of extension taking place, the amount of elongation taking place. Now, first of all, let me just show you how this actually looks. So, so it's, it's going to be something like this. Let me just show you. In 3D, it would be something like this. This is the thickness that is represented by T. Here also the thickness does not change. The thickness does not change. Remember, it's a uniform thickness case. But what changes? You can see as you move along from left to right, this gradually increases. And this right over here, um, let's call this as a small b. Let's call this as small b. And when you go to the extreme right, this becomes capital B. Okay, so this is the case. Thickness is going to stay uniform. Here, everywhere the thickness remains T. But the thing that increases is this B, right? Height, you can say. Now, what we wish to do is, first of all, we need to make the front view of it. Okay, now you know how this has to be made. So, what we'll try to do is, we'll try to make the front view. And there is going to be an axial pull. The name is P. Now what we'll try to do is we'll try to have an element. We'll try to have an element of this sort. And let me just hatch the element. This element has been taken at a distance X. And the thickness of this element or the length of the element is DX you can say. Let me just write this DX. And one more thing that the length that the length is well that's L. So you can basically say at x is equal to 0 okay this over here is small b and at x is equal to what L this over here is capital B you can say that. Okay now guys let us take this session forward and let us try to analyze this element. Let me try to make it over here. So from the front you see this dx so it's, it's something like this this is the element the rectangular element okay that's dx for you right let me just hatch this now when you look at this from the side this element is actually is actually this okay it's like this from the side you will get to see this but what about this dimension you know over to the extreme left this over here a small b we know that and similarly over to the extreme right this over here is caps lock b or capital b we know that but somewhere here what is the value how much is the depth can that be worked out yes that can be done so over a range of l meters over a range of l meters you can clearly see that it varies from small b to capital b so the range is b minus b so for one meter it's going to be b minus b over well, it's going to be L. So for X meter, it's going to be B minus B over L times of X. Now, obviously, here, this depth, here the depth is going to be more than this B. So what I'll do is B plus. How much? This much. B minus B over L into X. B minus B over L multiplied by X. That's it. Small B plus B minus B over L times of X. Once you do that, you have the depth over here right and by this formula you can find the depth anywhere across the cross section now <coughs> let's try to formulate extension in the element let us try to find the extension in the element now this element over here guys it it is being pulled with the help of this force p from both the directions obviously and there is going to be some sort of extension that extension can be written as again PL upon AE. You remember this formula? PL over AE. This is what we will be using. So that's P. How much is L? How much is this the length? That is DX. Okay. What about the area? Area. 
so i am worried about the cross section area this is the area that i am talking about this is the cross section area t multiplied by this stuff over here so t multiplied by this that is b plus b plus b minus b over l times of x and you just close the bracket p l over area multiplied by young's modulus e right this was left let me just plug it in over here okay so that is the this is how you can calculate the extension in the element now what i wish to do is i wish to find the extension of this entire object the extension of this entire trapezoidal section of uniform thickness how can that be achieved let me just show you well what you need to do is you need to integrate okay so watch carefully you need to do an integration so the x is actually changing from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l so the lower limit is going to be 0 upper limit is going to be l and then this stuff done that's it p dot dx again this is going to be very very confusing you need to use a lot of lot of integration technique to to solve this integration so how can this be achieved can we simplify this further well that can be done when p and t can be taken outside the integral because they have absolutely no role okay they they are constants okay but first of all i would suggest you guys to take this b minus b over l where is this b minus b over l as x okay just just do this substitution first take b minus b over l is equal to k let's say once you do that once you do that our integration changes to 0 to l and let me just have p upon t outside and this is going to become well dx over over what b plus kx now how can we integrate this do we have a methodology let me just go ahead and check this first of all this is going to be p by t p by t has been taken as outside and there is something else which i forgot that is this e so e can has to be taken outside that is e into t okay now i'll tell you an easy way of approaching this let's see let's say or let's substitute b plus kx with m on differentiating on differentiating well with respect to x if you do the differentiation this is a constant zero and here only k will remain so k will be equal to dm over dx so what do we want we want the replacement of dx in terms of dm so dx is basically equal to dm upon k now you also want to change the limits so if you watch carefully if you plug in the value of x is equal to zero if you plug in x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l you are going to have the corresponding value for m m is equal to what if you put x is equal to 0 m is equal to b if you put x is equal to l then m will be b plus k l isn't it m will be b plus k l it's that simple how can we approach this now so this is going to be p upon upon what t e isn't it t e and then there is an integral we know the new integrals b to b plus k l and the stuff inside is going to be this okay dx has to be replaced with what 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 where, where is it dx is equal to dm over k so this k will be outside over dm over k so this is going to be dm and this has to be written as m dm over m you know very well this integral right dm over m is natural log ln so let us proceed let us proceed p over k t e p over k t e and this is natural log ln what natural log m and the limits which you need to plug in are from say b where is it b to b plus k l b plus k l now things will start getting very easier you watch this this is going to be p over k t e and this is going to be ln 
b plus k l minus l n b so two logarithms with a negative sign what you need to do you need to do the division p over k t e we are just simplifying l n b plus k l b plus k l divided by b okay you don't have to put a bracket rather put it over here this is what you are getting now b plus k l can be replaced by what where is it b plus k l here it is <coughs> let me just put it p over k t e times of natural log and this is b plus k what is k if you watch carefully k is b minus b over l so in place of k i am writing b minus b over l in place of this k multiplied by an l all of this divided by small v and let's try to simplify this b plus b minus b b and b will also cancel out b remains so b by b there you go so the extension in case of a trapezoidal section is equal to let's have the final expression p over k t e natural log that is ln well this is going to be capital b okay depth over to the right divided by depth over to the left p over small b let me check this okay capital b over small b exactly what i had thought about right okay now let's take this session forward and there is something else which i need to derive for you elongation due to the self weight this is going to be very very simple we are going to do the entire analysis in 3d here we go okay let's let's try to analyze this let's say we've got a ceiling okay and we've got a bar which is fixed over to the ceiling something like this let me just show you done right now if you watch carefully the weight density linear weight density let me just write this linear weight density now this can also be assumed as weight per unit length linear weight density or weight per unit length weight per unit length let's say weight per unit length is represented by small w okay this is small w now what we'll try to do is we'll try to take an element over here keep watching this is going to be very interesting we are going to take an element over here now this this element let me just yeah okay this element is actually at a height of say x from this bottom end and the thickness of this element or the height of this element let's say is represented by dx and by the way the entire length of this bar is represented by capital l okay and let me just finish this drawing and beautiful okay that is the element now let me just try to do an element analysis and then i'll take you through as to how the entire length of this this um, or entire extension for this particular bar can be worked out let's try to do an element analysis where shall i write it let me just do it over here so guys i would be making only this element okay like this okay now if you watch carefully this is the weight this portion this is the portion of the bar below the element so the entire weight of this portion entire weight of this portion would be acting on this element right so let me just complete this 3d like this and like this so the entire weight would be acting over here like this how much is this can you get the value you know this is weight per unit length this is newton per meter let's say so in 1 newton not in 1 newton but in 1 meter the weight is going to be equal to small w so for a distance of how much for a distance of x meters 
the weight is going to be how much w into x this is small w by the way this is how much small w this over here we already know this element this is dx right now we wish to find the extension extension of the element first of all that's going to be very important for us extension of the element and then we'll do it for the entire bar extension of the element extension of the element again we are going to use the same funda that is p l over a into e okay p how much is the force acting that is w x it's going to be equal to w x l how much is the length that is d x done over area the area in which this force is acting it's this please take a careful look at this area over which this force is acting is this can you get me the value of this area you don't have to really just take it as a a and then we have the young's modulus okay now for the entire bar if you want to find the extension for the entire bar you need to plug in the limits limits in the form of integration for the entire bar let's say if you want to do so you need to find you need to put x is equal to 0 until you reach here x is equal to l and this is how you can work it out this is going to be very simple okay let's have the constants mm, 0 to l first of all let me just write this w okay anything else divided by a and that's e and the stuff remaining inside would be x dx x dot dx now this is a very very simple integration and you can do this very easily let me just show you how to proceed this is w over a e okay let us do this integration x x square over 2 it's very simple x square over 2 and you need to plug in the limit say from 0 to l when you put this value this is what you will get finally w over a e multiplied by and this is l square over 2 something else which you can do okay remember this is the linear mass density this is the weight per unit del not mass density but weight density this is a newton per meter so let me just modify this this is w l one l has been shifted with this w and other l is over here divided by two times of a e right so just watch this for one meter for one meter of the bar the weight is how much small w so for l meters for the entire bar the weight is going to be how much w l and let's say this w l is represented by capital w and this capital w is nothing but the weight of the bar yeah, weight of the entire bar let's say so what i'll try to do is i'll try to plug it in over here this w l has to be replaced with this capital w l over 2 a e where this w is the weight of the bar of length l bar of length l this is how well you can crack these problems so guys that was all for today i'll see you in the next session and in the next prop next session rather we will take on some subjective problems which will again be followed with some objective problems also so there are going to be separate videos on subjective as well as objective problems there are a lot of things which we'll try to cover up in this topic of simple stress and strains so guys that was all for today i'll see you again in the next video until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching thanks